dice be a group, and we gently turn. One, two, three. 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 One, two, and three. Reaching over. One, two, three. 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 One, two, and three. Raising the arms, keeping the legs straight, we bend gently towards the floor and stretch. One, two, three. To your right. Two, three. To your left. Two, three. Middle once. Inhale. And exhale. Very good. And again. One, two, three. To your right. Two, three. To your left. Two, three. Middle once. Inhale. And exhale. And one more time. One, two, three. Right. Two, three. Two, three. Middle once. Inhale. And exhale. Hands on the waist, rotation, nice gentle circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Switch. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Crossing the hands, place them on the knees. We're going to make a nice gentle circle, keeping the feet flat. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Switch hands, switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Hands on the waist. We're going to turn the head side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, and two. Back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Tilting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. And rotation, looking all the way around, gentle circle. One, two, and three. On the switch. One, two, and three. Good. Let's open the feet. Arms out. The arms are just going to go along for the ride. We're going to turn the waist gently, turn the head, kind of looking behind you. One, two. Three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, and four. Very good. So now we're going to step with our right foot out to the right side. Remember, we want to line up the arch of our right foot with the heel of our left. So we step straight out. And we're going to shift forward and back. Forward and back. We pivot on our heel, shift, pivot on the heel. We go forward, back, forward, back. Pivot. Shift, pivot, good. Forward, back, forward, back, pivot, shift, pivot, forward, back, forward, and back. So just as a quick clarification, um, you notice that I'm always narrating when to pivot and when to shift and all of that. And as a rule, if you want to move your foot, you're better off to take your weight off of that foot. So if I have my weight on this foot, it's very hard to move it. When I put all of the weight on my other foot, taking the weight off of this foot, it becomes much easier to move. It doesn't mean that you can't move your foot with weight on both legs. It's just not great for the joint to do that. You're going to put a lot of resistance and torsion into the joint. It's not really designed for that. So when we go forward, and back, we want to have all of our weight on the back leg. That makes it a lot easier to pivot on that foot. And then we're going to shift to the other leg, taking the weight off of that one makes it easier to pivot back foot. So we go forward, back, forward, back. I pivot when I'm in the back position because there's no weight or shouldn't be weight on that foot that I want to move. Back, forward. Back. So what's happening is you've got your feet aligned to face the rear. So if you put your right foot to the right wall, yep, and you go forward, back, forward, back. Now you bring your toe towards your other toe, shift, yep, forward, back, forward, back. Good. So this applies to that exercise, but it actually just applies to any time you want to move. But a lot of times we're fearful of taking the weight completely off of one leg, or more accurately, of putting all the weight on one leg. We feel a little less stable. And so we may not get all of the weight off of that foot. And you notice that your feet kind of catch as you go because you haven't really taken the weight off. And it's like a self fulfilled prophecy because what you were trying to do, the opposite is achieved. You're trying to minimize the risk by not really shifting forward. And what you end up doing is much more likely that something that's sticking off the ground just that high could compromise my balance. Whereas if I have no weight on my belt as it's moving, it can catch on anything and it's not going to affect my balance. If it has weight on it, then I can lose my balance. So whether it's Tai Chi or just any time that you're mobile, if you have a plan to move a foot in any direction, your best to make sure that there's as little weight on that foot as possible. It's going to make it easier to move. It makes it easier to make adjustments, right? One of the ways I would describe the way that most people walk is falling towards your face and stopping yourself with your foot, right? We've got that forward momentum. Every step is kind of an overcommitment. You know, it's fine if you're walking on this floor and there's no, you know, there's no obstacle, but if you're walking in the grass and there's a little divot and you do that, you can't make an adjustment. It's too late. You just end up falling down. And so if you get used to controlling your balance, you won't be a victim to your balance. And so when we're doing this, we're trying to build that sensitivity in the feet and that understanding of how to move only when there's no weight on that foot, right? How do we know when we've shifted completely forward or back? When we start in this empty stance, our front front foot, that leg is straight. 
and the rear leg, the leg that's supporting it, that has the weight on it right now, is bent. When I go forward, the front knee has to bend and the rear leg has to go straight. If the front knee is bent and the rear leg bent, I have weight on both legs. If I straighten that foot and go forward, then all of the weight is on that front foot. There's a little the weight of this leg is still here, but I can take that weight off by then standing up. Right? So that's what we're trying to teach ourselves. All of these exercises that we're doing, they have a benefit in um, enhancing our understanding of what we're trying to do with Tai Chi, but they also just have a general benefit to our, our ability, our mobility, all of that stuff. So, all right, so let's do deep breathing, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale, and exhale, good. Again, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale, and exhale. And one more time, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, inhale, and exhale. Excellent. So now we're going to uh, put the hands on the waist, shoulder rolls going back. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. We go forward. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Now we're going to bend at the elbows, pick the palms up facing us, turn the palms over, free fall. We inhale through the nose on the up and exhale through the nose on the down. Good. Deep breathing again. Palms up, elbows down. We inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Very good. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Very good. So from here, we're going to shift our weight to the left. Right. So when we shift to the left, we want to keep the shoulder on top of the hip. So this means the spine is straight, even though the legs are at an angle. And also, we want to bend the knees when we get to that side. This is something a lot of people have a hard time with. Maybe your knees have that injury. Maybe they just have stiffness or lack of mobility. If I just shift to the side and my legs aren't bent, I have a very small distance that I can go before I get past the tipping point. If I bend the knees, I can go pretty far and still keep the body vertical. Right. So when we're here, we shift gently to the side. Now we want to lift up by standing up on the left leg, lifting the heel right, bring your right foot in, extend it out, in, and out. We now shift gently to the right, lift, bring the foot in, out, very good, in, out, shift, lift. Bring it in, out, in, out, shift, lift, bring it in, out, and in. Very good. So now we're going to put all of our weight on the right leg. We want to bend the right leg slightly. If the knee is locked, you can see that as the leg swings, the whole spine's affected. If I can bend that leg just a little bit, it makes it much easier. So what I want to do is lightly touch to the front and then lightly touch back. So this is with the left foot. So I'm going to keep all my weight on the right leg and then lightly touch back with the left, to the front, to the back, to the front. Now notice I'll do it from the side so you can see there is no change of position of my body. 
I don't have that kind of forward and back momentum. If I do, I'm putting weight on that foot. I want to keep all the weight on my right leg. Okay. So let's go with the right foot. We start with the left foot back. We're going to put the left hand forward. And now we're going to bring the left foot forward and switch hands. And switch. Good. Switch. 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 Switch, 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 and switch. That's great. Let's try the other side. So we put all of the weight on the left leg, bring the right foot back, right hand forward, and switch, 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 switch. Excellent. Switch. 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 And switch. Very good. Now let's put all of our weight on the right leg again. And this time we're going to lightly touch to the side. We'll bring it in, lightly touch. So even when we bring it in, we don't want to land on it. We just want to lightly touch. 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 Good. So with that foot out to the left. Both hands to the right, and the hands come across as the foot comes in. Out, good. In, out. 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 In, and out. Excellent. Let's try the other side. So we put all the weight on the left. Weight we touch with the right. Both hands to the left. Bring the hands across as we come in. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. And out. The things that's ironic is that one of the most beneficial things we can do for our balance is to relax. And yet when we're fearful of losing our balance, it's hard to relax. Right? So when we're doing something that also has a level of complexity to it, we're trying to coordinate two hands from one direction, the foot going the opposite direction, not putting weight here or here, it can be a lot to focus on and it can kind of raise the anxiety so that we find ourselves getting a little bit tense. So it's important to remember to breathe. Right? If we if we stop breathing, not so great. So a lot of times when we're when we have nerves about something, we don't realize the extent to which we're holding our breath. And that affects the muscles of the chest get tight and everything kind of doesn't move as well. Ironically, it's self-fulfilling as a prophecy of doom because if I'm tense, I'm much more likely to fall. I used to worked for many years in construction. I worked on a lot of the high rises downtown Boston, so like Millennium Towers and all those giant buildings, I was on all of those. And they would send out an apprentice who, you know, they're, they're sometimes fresh out of, they're fresh and graduated out of high school and they're gonna start their trade. And so they have, they're really bringing not a lot of experience. And some of those guys would come out and right away, they're okay. You know, they might not know which end of a screwdriver to hold, but you know, they, <laughs> But you can tell they're okay. And then you'd get a guy who was maybe 25 years of experience on the duck side, the HVAC side of things, but had never been up on the roof. And they get up there and you can just tell them, like, just don't, just go home. <laughs> you know, because you know, you can you can actually you're much more likely to fall with that fear. So one of the things we can practice for ourselves, although we don't have to do it thankfully at the height of a skyscraper, is we can practice breathing and relaxing the body as much as is possible in everything that we want. So all of these exercises from this to this to this, even this one, you know, we're practicing specifically breathing it out, but even breathing in when you start and letting it out as you go down, all of these things we can practice because the more we experience deep breath and relaxation, uh, tension is infectious. 
right? If I squeeze both of my fists as tight as I can, it's not long before my shoulder is tight, my chest is tight, my legs are tight, everything gets tight. But the good news is the reverse is true. If I'm in a tense state and I can just get my fist to unclench, pretty soon the rest of it can start to relax. So we can practice relaxation, we can practice breathing deeply and gently, and that can help pervade the rest of our movement in our day-to-day -day lives, which has really strong benefits. The, um, actually, I think everybody in this class moves pretty well. Um, I don't think that any of you are gigantic candidates for a fall, which is good news. Um, a harrowing statistic that I had learned a while back, um, you know, some years ago when I first started working with seniors was 70% of people over the age of 70 have had a fall, which is crazy to me because there's a lot of people over the age of 70. And to think that the majority of those people experience a fall, especially when we consider the kind of your hip, but you know, at a certain age, you don't feel the same way. You're in the hospital, complications can, can arise very quickly. And so the stakes are pretty high. Um, so anything we can do to kind of improve our balance, and if we can get ourselves to move that way in day-to-day -day life, so it's great to be able to come to Tai Chi and to get this kind of coordination down is awesome, but if we can learn how to relax as we walk and to be more in control of our balance versus potentially being a victim of our balance, I think then we've really done something worth doing. So, okay. So we've done both sides of the side to side. All right. And uh, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to step out with our left foot. So again, we're going to touch the arch of our left foot to the heel of our right and step way down. So I want one foot facing directly towards the front of the class, and then I want to step out with my left foot to the left wall. Yep. And now what we're going to do is we're going to gently shift our weight to the left side, relax the hip and turn to the left. Sit back on the right and relax the hip, turn to the right. Shift to the left, release to the left, sit back on the right, turn to the right. Shift to the left, turn to the left, sit back on the right, turn to the right. Shift to the left, turn to the left, sit back on the right, turn to the right. So we want to bend the knees when we're doing this because again, if I do this, I have a lot less room before I lose my balance. The other thing is that if Locked and I shift, the hip gets tilted. And it's a lot harder to keep the body vertical when your hip is tilted tilted because the torso is connected, right? It sits on top of the frame of that hip. And so if your hip is tilting, your body is going to tilt. So we want to keep that body vertical. When I shift forward, if I bend that knee and then relax when you're facing this way, when I sit back, if I bend my right knee, my rear leg, end up facing this way. So I shift, turn, sit back, turn. Awesome. So now we're going to put the right hand to the left shoulder and the left hand to the right hip. We're going to shift to the left, lift the left, draw down with the right, and turn, draw down with the left. So we go right hand to the shoulder, sit back, left hand to the hip, shift to the left, lift the left, draw down with the right, turn, draw down with the left. Right hand to the shoulder, good. Sit back, left hand to the hip. Shift to the left, lift the left. Draw down to the right, turn. Draw down to the left. Right hand to the shoulder. Sit back, left hand to the hip. Shift to the left, lift the left. Draw down to the right, turn. Draw down to the left. Beautifully done. So let's do the same thing on the other side. We're going to point our left foot directly towards the front of the class. That's the arch of left foot. And step straight out. Now nope, switch it. There you go. You got it. So now we're going to shift to the right, turn to the right. Get back on the left, turn to the left. Shift to the right, turn to the right. Get back on the left, turn to the left. Shift to the right, turn to the right. Get back on the left, turn to the left. Okay. So very quickly, before we continue, um, your body wants to align itself to the direction of the foot that has weight on it, right? So the most uh, the most um, unexaggerated version of that or way to, to show that is if I crank this foot around, 
Now, if I relax my hip and take all my weight off of this foot, my body naturally wants to face this, right? Seems pretty obvious that my, like this, um, I'm a terrible ballerina, but you know, that's not the most comfortable position for me. That's the most comfortable position, right? So what we're doing when we're doing this exercise, the still grilling exercises, is we're setting this relationship of the direction of feet and then changing which foot has weight on it. This is why we turn if the hip is relaxed. If I crank this foot around and my hip is tight, I stay here. But if I release, I naturally face this way. So when I have my feet aligned, one facing in front of the class, my right foot facing the right wall, when I shift to the right, and relax my hip, I end up naturally facing the right because that's always facing that way. When I sit back on the left and bend the left knee and relax the hip, I end up facing this way because the left foot is facing this way. So I shift, turn, sit back, turn, good, shift, turn, sit back, turn, nice, shift, turn. Sit back, turn. So this is useful because when we add the arms, we're trying to remember you know, when did I, when was I supposed to turn? But I don't have to remember any of that. All I have to do is relax the body, shift my weight to this side, and then the body turns to that side. When I come back, I relax the body, and it turns to this side. So I shift the right, lift the right, draw down with the left, turn, draw down with the right. Left hand shoulder, sit back, right hand hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down to the left, turn, draw down to the right, left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down to the left, turn, draw down to the right, left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down to the left, turn, draw down to the right. Pretty good. All right, so the next exercise we're going to do. We can either touch lightly with the left toe to the front, or you can also do this feet shoulder width, whichever you're most comfortable with. We're, I'm going to do it with the toe touching. We're going to cross the wrist, left hands on the outside, and the elbows are in a vertical position. So from here, we lift the horizontal elbow, extend the left hand directly out in front, and turn your waist to the corner. Drop the elbows and turn back to the front. Now, when we turn to the corner, sometimes we're tempted to turn the head with it, but I actually want to keep my gaze to the front. So I lift the elbows, extend the left hand to the front, turn to the corner. Good. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front, and drop. Lift, extend, turn, drop, turn. Lift, extend, turn, drop, turn. Good. Lift, and turn. Drop, turn, lift, extend, turn, drop, and turn. Very good. Let's switch feet. Slightly touching with the right toe for those touching. Now we're going to cross with the right hand on the outside. We lift to horizontal, extend, turn to the corner, drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Good. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand, turn to the corner, drop the elbows, turn to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the corner, turn right hand to the front, turn to the corner, and drop, turn to the front. Very good. Okay, the next one we're going to do, we're going to form a low loop. And we're just going to breathe deeply and gently, trying to relax the body. Very good. Let's go shoulder height. You might notice a little more tension in the shoulders. The arms are further away from the body. We want to try to get that to relax. Drop the elbows, holding a small ball. The position of our arms here is just like this triangle position. So the elbows are down, but not together. And then the wrists fall back like we're holding a small ball between the palms. 
for anyone who plays bocce here, it's about the size of a bocce ball. Now we're going to bring the elbows out, turn the palms over, straighten the arms, the legs, and the spine. Straighten the wrist, fingers towards the forearms, kind of drape off the shoulders. 